on transmission loss and dynamic response of membrane type locally resonant acoustic mid materials. This work was conducted in the USC Composite Center under the advisement of Steve Nutt and with HRL Labs. The motivation behind my research is to develop materials with good sound insulation and low frequencies for aerospace applications without adding significant weight or bulk. And the method that I'll be presenting in this talk is about membrane type acoustic metamaterials. For a little bit of background, uh, airborne sounds outside of the cabin in the airplane can cause discomfort for passengers, and typical treatments for this problem include foams or fibers. Now, these have a few problems in that they degrade over time, they perform poorly at low frequencies, and they add significant weight and bulk, which add cost to the air, air travel. A little bit of background about metamaterials. Uh, metamaterials are engineered to provide properties not readily available in nature, and they derive their properties from their structure rather than composition. Now, a lot has been done in studying EM metamaterials, which have been reported to have negative permittivity and permeability, and similarities between the EM and acoustic waves indicate that there should be potential acoustic structures that have negative modulus and density kind of a, as a corresponding uh, structure. The structure that I will be talking about today is the sort of sonic crystal, which are used for either sound focusing or as sound barriers. Typically, Bragg reflectors are used to uh, block sound. The problem with these is that uh, they require structures on the same order as the wave that they're uh, interacting with, which in the case of low frequency sound is on the order of meters, and so that's not really practical for aerospace applications. They also require a periodic structure. The, the talk that I'll be giving is about locally resonant structures, which do not require a periodic structure and do not require uh, large scale structures. The structure that I work with is a two-dimensional sonic crystal, crystal, which is constructed of a thin membrane, which is stretched in tension um, to a support structure, and then a mass is placed in the center. The mass can be changed in magnitude, and changes in the geometry, including the membrane size, thickness, and tension, as well as the mass magnitude, to the effective frequency. The size of the structure that I did my testing on had a diameter of 24 millimeters, and that was uh, chosen because of the experimental setup, which I'll get into in a minute. So when sound waves are incident on a structure, they can either be absorbed, transmitted, or reflected. And I, the property that I'm measuring is transmission loss, which gives the ratio of the incident to transmitted sound. So when we're measuring transmission loss for sound insulation, we want to uh, have a high transmission loss, and that corresponds to good sound insulation. The objectives for my talk are, are to examine the transmission loss of a single cell structure, um, including mass variations on the structure, create analysis that will predict changes in the transmission loss um, for different membrane and mass combinations, to determine the, the cause of the transmission loss increase by investigating the mode shapes of the structure during excitation, to experimentally confirm the analytically predicted negative mass of the structure, and to examine the transmission loss of an array of these structures, as well as developing analysis to correspond with that. The experimental setup to measure transmission loss is, uh, an impede, is called an impedance tube. The sample is mounted here um, and excited by a speaker. The speaker emits plane wave um, sound waves at a variety of frequencies or as broadband sound and then microphones both upstream and downstream of the structure measure the pressure incident and transmitted through the structure, um, and then the transmission loss can be calculated. Typically for a single partition, like a wall or a piece of foam, the relationship between transmission loss and frequency is linear when frequency is plotted on a log scale. Now this means that at low frequencies, the transmission loss of a single structure is really poor, which is why what we're aiming for is to improve, our, use our structure to improve this low frequency response. The frequency response of the 
membrane metamaterial that we worked with looks like this. With three key features. There's a low frequency resonance, a high frequency resonance, and a transmission loss peak. And just for a little bit, um, kind of a reference, 40 decibels here um, of transmission loss corresponds to 1% of the amount of sound pressure transmitted across the structure. So that's actually a really good response. If we start with a structure that has a, a given curve and add mass to the center of the structure, so just increase the, the amount of magnitude of the mass in the center of the structure, the transmission loss peak increases in magnitude and decreases in its effective frequency. And we can get about a 300 hertz decrease in our frequency, which is what we want, this low frequency response. If we plot that, those same two curves with two different mass magnitudes, with, along with the mass law that I showed a little bit earlier, for a single uniform piece of material, such as a foam or just a, a partition, you can see that at low frequencies, the amount of mass in the structure indicates a essentially zero or very low transmission loss. So that we get about a 500% increase or 47 decibel increase over the predicted transmission loss for this structure. In addition to the experimental results, we also performed, performed finite element analysis using multi-physics software, which allowed for easy variation of the geometry, including the membrane material, the mass magnitude, the size of the structure. Um, however, we did make some simplifications, which were that we did not include damping in the membrane material. We assumed a perfectly clamped boundary condition in the tube, which what we attempted to achieve, but was probably not perfectly clamped. And we assumed a uniform tension across the membrane. Taking a look at the results, we were able to accurately predict the response within about 6.5% for the, both resonance frequencies and peak transmission loss frequencies. And the advantage of this is that it allows us to use the modeling to try different membrane materials, different mass magnitudes, without having to actually fabricate them all. So the next logical question then is, why do we get this transmission loss increase? Which is such a thin structure, we expect it to perform really poorly acoustically. If we take a look at the transmission loss curve, the low frequency resonance is, is well known and is um, characterized by a out of plane displacement of the center mass having a maximum, whereas the high frequency resonance the mass is uh, almost stationary, and the membrane itself vibrates out of phase. So then the question is, what's going on at the peak, right? In order to determine this, we use the same impedance tube we used to measure the transmission loss. And the structure was excited using the speaker at discrete frequencies. So we mounted the sample in the impedance tube and, you, and just use a single frequency to excite the structure at each of those key fre frequencies. We then used a laser vibrometer swept from the center of the structure where the mass is out across the radius to develop a mode shape under excitation. 